today. Thank you all for joining. Uh, this will be recorded, so if you got a bounce at some point, you can. Um, we'll send out the recording probably a little bit later on today. Howdy, viewer 58. And so here we go. Oh, by the way, I made one of these slides. Well, I didn't, but one of our designers made one of these slides for you. Multi-channel marketing, SMS, social, mobile coupons, mobile websites, email marketing. And you can put your logo on it if you want to. So we kind of made this one for everybody to be able to use. Yes, I know my allergies are always bad. That's the way it is. The, uh, you know, from the very, very beginning, I have talked to people about SMS. You know, this is back before, this is five years ago, six years ago. I talked to people about SMS being a part of the communication channels that a business should use, not being a replacement to one or the other. Not even, you know, people are always trying to argue, you know, is it SMS or social? Is it SMS or email? Is it, uh, you know, is email better than um, SMS or which one is better? And, you know, there's definitely, we have countless examples and data slides that talk about the power of SMS and how much better, quote unquote, better it is than social or email. But it's not, it, I don't even know that that is the right, the right way. I've always said multi-channel communication is the way that you, any business should be doing it. They shouldn't do SMS or email. It should be both. They shouldn't do email or social. It should be both. Uh, it shouldn't be one or the other. It should be all of them laid out on a marketing calendar. And you guys can picture a calendar right now. And some of you have been around long enough or watched my videos and seen me put a calendar up and then drop various color circles all over the, the calendar saying, you know, it's a, it's a text message one day. It's an email message a different day. It's a social, it's social media posts uh, on different days. And the reality is, you know, I can... Uh, do social media posts and boost them a few times a month. But I can do social media posts and tweets, you know, four or five times a week. I can do email marketing, and a lot of email marketing experts now are pushing uh, and saying, and you'll see the data on it coming up here in a second, that you can send even more emails than what most businesses are sending today. Most businesses might be sending out three or four or five. But the trend the last year or two has been to send even more emails. In those businesses that are sending more emails are getting a higher return on investment. Thus, they because they're just getting more impressions out there. And we'll talk a little bit about how email works a little bit differently than SMS anyway. But then SMS, what is SMS? SMS is the most intimate, powerful, um, uh, most, it's the most, um, when I say intimate, it's the most personal. It's the most timely. Thus, we have to baby the um, frequency that we send in SMS. And so it might be the least frequent of all the channels, but it's the one that's the most important. It's the one you send 30 minutes before a webinar. It's the one that you send out right when your uh, uh, Friday, um, you know, Friday special starts. It's when Black Friday comes and you send that out 8 o'clock in the morning. And you know by 8.05, everybody knows, you know, they're standing in line at Walmart. They know what specials you're offering. It's the most timely, the most important, um, because it's read within five minutes most of the time. So, um, but it's just one of the many channels, and I can't say that enough. The way that we should be and should have been pitching SMS is to walk into business and say, look, this is a tool that will double the amount of opens that you get on your email marketing campaigns. This is a tool that will put more people into your social networks and get you more likes and more follows instantly. This is a tool that will drive your e-commerce, not just today, but in the future. This is a tool that will get more people to have greater awareness about you and drive transactions, and it works in cohesion with everything else that you do. And that's the way we should be talking about it. Not in, you know, uh, not so much like we do where it's a competing tool. It's not competing. It's going to augment those other channels. And now you can do all of these things right inside the same communication, multi-channel marketing hub. It's a hub. What we're providing you is a hub that you can walk into any business today and say, uh, viewer 49 wants to present. I guess they don't like my slide. Um, <laughs> the, you know, uh, the, this is a tool that you can walk in and provide anybody and say, look, you know, you're doing all these different things. Let us make them all more powerful and let's manage it all inside one username and password. And then we can get 
uh, and bring their email over to you and then add in the other channels with the philosophy of how we do it. One other side note before we get started, um, you guys know that uh, Google changed their algorithm effective today saying that people, uh, the businesses will get docked. Uh, it's one of their criteria now that if they do not have a good mobile website that they um, uh, will have lower rankings in the search engines. So it will be one of the factors now that will, if you've got a good mobile presence. So, you know, bringing that is just another piece of this whole thing that we're bringing to people, um, you know, is very important because it's not just, you know, uh, talking to people about their email marketing and how you can bring it over and potentially save them money and get them more opens, but that you can double the size of the, or the number of people in their email database so they can make their email even more effective by using SMS. But you can also, when people are searching for them on the web right now, you can get them higher rankings by giving them a good mobile website and then build them a good mobile website. And you can reference today's change in the algorithms, which if you need like a URL to be able to, you know, show people or send to people, this New York Times article came out yesterday talking about mobile friendliness being in the criteria. And if you guys want that one, I'll give that to you right now in the little chat. So here's the chat. To do. There's your URL if you want to save that for later, and I'll put it somewhere on this uh, somewhere on this slide deck too, because you guys can have this slide deck. It's got some new slides in it. You guys can add these some of the to the existing powerpoints, and so there's that URL if you want that. Okay, so let me show you a few things real quick. Let's talk about oh one more re new release, and this will be effective today for you, and it's pretty exciting. It's an actual dashboard. Um, when you log in, you um, will be able to see actual account activity. So when you log in, the first thing you see is not your My Account page like it's previously been there. It's going to be like your uh, list of what's been going on, how many accounts that you've got active, um, how many mobile websites you've got over a period of time. Uh, this is one of my demo accounts here. So this is a test account how many active real estate listings and what period of time, if you've got V cards, how many V cards you have and, you know, and what, in what period of time. So you can look at it kind of, you know, uh, how many SMS messages you've sent and that kind of things. Oh, you can't see the slides. Is that, am I moving? I'm not on pause, right? Everybody can see me. Okay, good. Just making sure I saw that pop up. So um, a new dashboard, which will allow you to see some activity, of what's going on and then you can navigate to whatever. So I think it's a little bit prettier, it looks a little nicer, pretty exciting stuff. So let's jump in and look at some email stuff and then we'll jump into the email side of the platform. Email will be turned on live today for everybody and you can, um, uh, for everybody that has their information in there. And I'll talk, let me go ahead and talk about that real quick while I'm, while I'm thinking about it. So if you don't already have email on, um, it could very well be, well, first of all, email will show up right here in your menu. It's just another one of the uh, menu items, and it'll say email, and it will launch a new tab because the email side of the application is on its own servers. It's a very big application. We've been working on it. We've actually been using it um, uh, over a year and a half with certain clients, but just releasing it for new clients. Um, or for new resellers, or for our reseller partners today. Um, so it'll be right here, and when you click it, it opens up the new tab, and, and you'll see it. The um, If you do not have it right now, then you need to go to your accounts and settings and go to my settings, and you need to update all of your, um, uh, what is it? It's your, I don't, you can't see it in my account. It's the... Let me go into one here. You need to go into your account profile and make sure you have all of the information that you need in there. Your company name, address, uh, city, state, zip, phone number, all of that needs to be updated. So make sure, oh, and your My Profile cards. So make sure that you've got all of that information updated and then tomorrow with real information, and then tomorrow we'll uh, run a script again and update you to make sure that you've got email added onto your application. 
So make sure you do that and then email will show up in here uh, once you have updated your account profile and uh, John will send out an email later on today or we'll send out an email talking to you about that. All right, let me try this one more time and jump back in here and talk about email growth for just a second. So is email dead? That was really the question going through my mind. And so I started doing a little bit of research on it. And today, it's uh, re people are sending more messages than they ever have. Look at the growth between the numbers of messages over here on the left and the top retailers. Uh, they're sending more emails on a monthly basis than they were um, over the previous years. And if you look at this over a longer period of time, it's, it's a lot more. I went to a... Um, uh, inbound outbound marketing clinic a month ago and I think I may have mentioned this in a previous webinar and they were talking about one group that were send that was sending out like uh, I think it's a, it was an email a day and driving e-commerce traffic and they were like oh that's way too much you need to back that off and they backed it off to two emails a week and their prof their uh, number of transactions dipped to 30 percent of what they were doing or roughly 30 percent I'm not getting the numbers exactly right and they're like oh you're still doing it too much let's do it once a month or once a week, and their profits dropped even more. And they went back to sitting, you know, seven seven times a week or five times a week or whatever the number was. The thing is about email is we pay more attention to the emails that are on top. You know, the stuff way down, that get down the page, you know, a lot of times we're, we don't even ever look at those as they, as they get down. So if you're not right on top of the email inbox, uh, you're not, you may not be getting the opens and the click-through rates that you were before. So, you know, brands have figured that out and, and tracked, if I send more emails, do I get more people visiting my site? And do I get more transactions? And the results have been that they have, and so they're sending more emails. There's an opportunity for us there, because people may not be sending very many emails now, but we bring that kind of data to them, and we say, look, there's an opportunity here for you to maybe send more emails and make more money. Here's another key finding, um, or a summary of key findings. Um, email should account for approximately 25% of your overall revenue. Well, many businesses out there aren't sending out the one or two emails a week, making additional offers to their current customers, driving them to their e comm site, selling gift cards, letting them know about catering services, letting them know about you know the curbside to go or whatever it is that they've got. Um, email still has the highest tracked ROI of any channel, averaging $44 for every dollar spent. Unbelievable statistic to take to anybody. Now, we know when I say tracked, it's because a lot of people aren't tracking their uh, response of their SMS campaigns, but I've seen SMS campaigns get better than 80 to 1. Uh, I've seen 120 to 1 in many circumstances, obviously because of the higher open rates, higher click-through rates, but there's something to be said about email. And if I can put a dollar down on the table and get $44 back in extra transactions, you better believe that that's something I'm interested in doing. So we've got a lot of power in selling email marketing here now as, as another component of what we've got. Uh, let's look at a few more things. So 56% of businesses say they'll increase their use of email marketing um, in, the, in the next year. It's great information. Now, that was in 2013, but that's still a, a, a factor. 33% of emails uh, open based on their subject line. 64% um, of uh, people read their emails on mobile devices. This is a very important statistic. I'll tell you why in a second. And 44% of email recipients made at least one purchase last year uh, based on a promotional email. Very, very important. And there's that dollar figure again about the average return on, uh, on email, on sending emails out. So um, one last thing that I threw in here, just to, or I guess I got one more side of this one. One, you don't have to discount. We don't always have to discount, discount, discount to, to get extra transactions from people. We don't always have to coupon or, or really greatly discount to be able to get people to, it's mainly about staying in front of them and letting them know that you're there. And you know, that's a the great way, to, that's the best way to be able to utilize the communication channels. So um, mobile responsive email templates are absolutely the way to go. 43% of people are opening up their emails on a mobile device. That was in 2013. Um, last year, it was even greater numbers, and this year it'll be even more. Um, the problem is you'll still have a large percentage of people that won't open their email on a mobile device because the email that they're giving to the vendor is actually 
the one that they don't check on their phone. For instance, I don't give for my loyalty programs and things like that. I don't give my email address that I open on my phone. That one's saved for business. But uh, I do have email addresses for my vendors, and I do open those, but I always am open up on my desktop when I'm at work. Right? So our, the email templates that you're providing to businesses are responsive. If anybody has received an email from us about this webinar, it was from our templates, and they looked great on your mobile phone when you open them up, and which is very important because most decision makers are opening up their email from their mobile device. So let's send them an email that's got a nice clean design and it looks great on a mobile device. And here it is again, uh, the number of people opening up emails. Look at the mobile rise, how many people are opening up. And this year it's set to eclipse. More emails will be opened up on a mobile device. Thus, you can walk in to any business with that information and say, look, you're sending out emails. But here's the thing. Here's the pitch, guys. Any business today in your market, if they are a legitimate business, they're paying between $30 and $100 a month to send out emails to their customers. If they're a legitimate business of really any kind. You can walk in there today and you can say, look, you're sending emails, but I've got two things for you. One is uh, we can likely save you some money on your emails that you're sending right now. But who cares about that? The more important thing is we're going to get you more opens by putting more of your emails you're sending in the inbox of your clients. That's very important. We're going to put more of the emails you're sending in their inbox, and I'll tell you why in a little while. But the other thing about it is we're going to give them a nice mobile version because this year the majority of your customers are going to open up the email that you send on their mobile device. And the emails that we're going to send out for you will look great on a mobile device. Now let me throw in that we can double the amount of people that you've got in your email database in about 60 days by running an SMS campaign. And uh, we can add a whole bunch more people to your social media following and drive a lot more social engagements, which is going to help you pick up new business. So we can do all of that and save you money on your emails. You want to talk for a couple minutes? That's the pitch. You can lead with email if you want to, and that's the way to do it, right? So, and you've got the stats to be able to back it up. And I made this slide for you. We'll send that to you today. You guys can have that one, tweak it, make it your own, right? A quick glance. People are using email from somebody if they're a legitimate business. You yourself, your own business, Avid Mobile, the last, like, I don't know, four years of, you know, the previous four years, has paid between 30 and $400 per month to send out our emails. And we've used people like Constant Contact, MailChimp, um, vertical response. These are all people that you can find, benchmark. These are all people that you can find that are sending emails out or that, you, that any business in your local market might be, you know, uh, uh, spending any, any ranges of this amount of money and paying around this amount per email to be able to send out messages, right? And like I said, most normal businesses, one location business is spending 30 to $80 per month. And your new email application all-in-one, mobile social email, virtual business cards, tools, mobile responsive designs, our reputation algorithm. Let me, let me talk a little bit about that. So these are all our uh, own IP addresses where we're sending these emails from. And if, you're, if you know anything about sophisticated email marketing, it's difficult because you know, you're running uh, IP addresses where these emails are coming out from and you're sharing them amongst many, many clients. And then people come in and they upload their list and they send out some emails that talk about Viagra or, you know, something. And then all of a sudden it hits a bunch of spam filters and then it messes up the IP addresses for everybody in the entire, um, uh, uh, you know, messes up your regular businesses. And then all of a sudden no one's getting any emails into Yahoo Mail or no one's getting any emails into AOL or whatever. I know you're thinking, why does anybody have AOL anymore? But that's the way it is. So, but um, we've got a built-in reputation algorithm tool that basically will take, so we've got our whole bank of IP addresses, a huge range of IP addresses. And as our clients send out emails, we rank them based on the number of opens that they get and the number of clicks and the number of opt-outs and the number of complaints. And then the people that have better and higher open rates go into our, our uh, A class and thus, those IP addresses, 
everybody's getting lots of opens. Everybody's getting really high scores. And thus, more of their emails actually hit inboxes when the bulk emails are sent out. And we can take, and we have done it over the years with different people, um, we can take somebody uh, that has, you know, that's maybe getting 15% open rates on their emails. And we send out emails on our system with our same databases because we allow you to upload lists. And those people are getting higher open rates because they're going out on our good IP addresses that have great reputations with um, all of the ESPs. And so, and obviously the bad ones, we're moving, uh, you know, they're moving them out and we'll even suspend those accounts. We also verify all emails. This is different than text messaging, okay? When we allow people to send out text messages at will, at the, on a moment's notice. However, we don't allow people to upload lists without approval. And so, you know, people have opted in for these messages. And, it, you know, it's fairly safe to assume that if they opted in for them, the messages you're sending out are not going to bother them. And we're not going to get in any trouble, or you're not going to get in trouble, or we're not going to get you know, anything, any problems. With email, it's a little bit different. We're allowing people to upload lists, and so they can, you can move somebody over, upload their email list immediately, and schedule an email to be sent. But any email that's going to be sent, there's only two choices. One choice is to be able to send as soon as possible. And the other choice is to be able to schedule it out. Well, as soon as an email is scheduled or set to be sent as soon as possible, it then goes into our queue, and we've got to look at that email and approve it to make sure that it's not a spammy type email. And once we approve it, then it would be sent out. So if you say send, send as soon as possible, as soon as it's approved, it will go out. If you schedule it to be sent tomorrow at 5, it'll be approved prior to tomorrow at 5. But if you write one on Saturday morning and schedule it to be sent you know, an hour later, it may or may not be approved, so you need to make sure and, and schedule ahead of time as best you can, right? Although we will be checking uh, from time to time periodically through the weekends, but this is to keep those IP addresses in the inboxes clean. So I just wanted to make everybody aware of that, okay? I'm going to come back and talk about the pricing in a little bit more detail later, but a lot of people want a preview of it, and so here it is. When you've got um, any, uh, first of all, we're turning it on for everybody. So everybody gets it and we're adding $15 a month, which means you can eliminate your current. If you're a legitimate uh, reseller right now, then you've got to email your current clients. You've got to email your prospective clients that you capture their email addresses for. And you're paying Constant Contact or somebody $30 a month or something. So this should be saving you some money because you're already paying some other provider to send out your emails. Um, we're adding this to everybody's account, $15 per month. Okay, that's just your base license. Now, for every account that you turn on for somebody else, it's $4 a month. How are you going to charge this? Well, this is profitable as soon as you sell two accounts, right? Because you go and close your first account, you charge them maybe $39 a month for the text messaging program, but it's $49 a month if they want email, right? So you're adding another $10 a month on it and, and charging an extra six bucks. Plus, you're charging them on a per email basis, right? And with your wholesale rates, after you've got five or six clients on and you're paying four tenths of a penny per, e per email and you're charging what is competitive rates at six, seven, eight tenths of a penny and you're making three or four tenths of a penny per email, well, think about it. Most people today have 2,500 people in their email list. Some of them have 4,000, some of them have 8,000, some of them have 10,000. And I'm talking about just regular one location businesses. If they're sending out four emails a month, which isn't enough, that's 10,000 emails, and you're, even if you're making three-tenths of a penny on it, you're making 30 extra dollars per month. That's one client with only 2,500 people in their email database. You see, this is different than text. Most of these businesses already have a big email list. So as soon as you move them over and you get even two-tenths of a penny, you're making money. You're making more money than what it is to be able to have this tool. Plus, it's going to help you close more business. Plus, it's going to help you... Uh, get the attention of people, um, and it's all in one hub. Now imagine somebody like, uh, we brought on a client, oh, eight, nine months ago, Suntan City, they had uh, six, let's see, what did they have, 350 locations, but their database was like 350,000 of uh, uh, email addresses, and they sent two a week, 
So they're sending like eight uh, uh, emails a month or 2.8 million. And when you're sending that kind of volume, even if you're making a tenth of a penny, right, to be able to get that business, that's $2,800 a month of additional net revenue off a client like that, just doing their email campaigns. You can literally call people right now and just try to save them money on their email campaigns. But the fact that you've got mobile responsive designs, the fact that you've got great reporting, the fact that you've got, you're going to get more emails into the inbox. You've got a lot of things to talk to people about in terms of getting them to move their email over to your system. And then the fact that it's an all-in-one system and you're going to help them grow their email databases, help them get more people onto their social pages and things like that. It, it just becomes infinitely more powerful. Let's jump in here and take a look at the email system. When you click email and it opens up your new tab, you go right into your dashboard that talks about, you know, here's our uh, current email release. It shows you your number of opens, your number of clicks, your number of bounces, your number of complaints. You can go in and view reporting on it. You can go in and look at your analytics quickly and with any of these kinds of things. And you can go in and create emails. The first thing, let's go in and take a look at, uh, the, you know, how big is your list? Uh, obviously, we're uploading some of our lists into here, so that's where I, our contacts grew so quickly. Um, when you uh, go into emails, my emails, my emails are all the emails that I've been working on. What's awesome about this tool is once you, and you'll see how to create a new email from scratch, but what's awesome about this tool is once you have created your um uh, once you have created your first email and you've got the template exactly how you want it with your logo and your colors and your social sharing pieces, then all you do is go over and copy it for your next email and then just change a picture in it and change the words. But you've got the base template already done and you can just copy it over and reschedule it out, right? So, but let's go in and look at how to create a new email because that's the thing that, you know, how, how hard is it? How intuitive is it? Super easy. So you go in, you create your um, email name. This is my demo email, but you would, you know, this is like Christmas special or whatever you want it to be. You can, you can put in your own HTML code. You can do just a plain text email, but everybody does a template email. That's what, that's what we do. So you hit select, you hit next, and you jump into choosing your layout. Now these are responsive designs, like I said. So I can do like a, a two column like that. Um, a, a one column, so it's got like an image, copy, and then three like subheadings of a newsletter. I can do one column with two columns like that. Um, so I just pick which, whichever one that I'm looking for, okay? So I can preview it by clicking that button. It kind of shows you, you know, what it's going to look like. That's what it's going to look like. I can hit select, and this is the one I'm going to use for this one. So now I go in and put in my actual subject line. Subject lines make a huge difference, and if something is opened, so you want to make sure your subject line is hot, right? Um, awesome, special today only, whatever you say. And you can change your what your center name says. You can uh, the reply. You can go into advanced options here and add your Google Analytics if you want to. And you, um, by turning that on or off, uh, permission reminder. And these all have little tips in there. Uh, you can remind people how you got their email address with the permission reminder. You can ask people to confirm it. You can offer the option. If I turn this on, that will say, having trouble viewing this email, then click here, and it will open up the web page version. It's okay to turn that on. Forward to a friend option, you can turn that on, and then that tells people they can forward it to a friend. And you can turn on personalized to, like to John or whatever, if you have that information in your database, which many people do. So when you upload it, you can upload that information. Once you've put in all that information, you go to next. You've got to have your physical address in there. And then uh, it takes you to actually customizing with the color scheme of what you want that email to look like. So I can go in here and select from preset colors. And once I pick them, you know, they can go like that. Or, you know, this is the one I want. I want it to look purpley. Or I can customize it down to... Um, you know, using my color pickers or drop in my hex color codes. Uh, I can customize my fonts and things like that. You want to cu customize your fonts and your colors and everything on it prior to going in. And because you can, you can edit your, you know, what your link colors are. You can save your theme to favorites once you've got it done. Um, we, you want to customize all your fonts 
and everything for each of those sections prior to coming here. Um, now I can change this design around. So I can add a section for a coupon by dragging it in here to wherever I want and dropping it in. And then it adds that coupon section into my email, right? Or I can delete that out of there by clicking that box and clicking OK. And now I can start editing. So all I do, just click the edit button. And then it populates my WYSIWYG editor. And I say, check out what Avid Mobile has to offer today. And then I can hit update, but I don't have to. I can add HTML code into that if I want to. And I, when I hit save and close, it takes me to the next one. Now I can upload my image. Now I can go to my image gallery in here, um, and which I've got an image gallery, and I can pre-upload all my images, um, or I can do them one at a time. So once I uh, um, go in and edit whichever one, I've got a bunch of images already uploaded in here. I can select which one that I want. I just grab one of my images. There it is. Hit select. It'll drop it in there. And hit save and close. And there's put it in there. So let's go back over into this one. And I want to select an image for this one. Go in here and grab this guy with the coffee cup. I uploaded him earlier. He looks he looks good. I like this guy. And hit save and, save and close. And then I can go down here. And I need to up, I need to uh, uh, edit some of this copy down there. And so I click my text because I want to work with my text. And then I say, whatever I want to say. All right? And you guys can just highlight this stuff, type in super good content. And then, you know, we're off and running. We hit save and close. It's going to drop it in there. There's my there's my stuff, you know, there's my customized footer that I can put down there. Um add add it all in. So once I've got my emails uh, constructed the way that I want it to, I can obviously preview it and then I can hit next. When I hit next, um the next thing is I'm going to decide who am I going to send this to. Right? And I've got various groups in here of people that I can send to. And so I select which group I want to send it to. And I hit next. And I can save it as a draft at this point. I can send it as soon as possible, which is that will be as soon as it's approved. Or I can schedule for sending. And notice these are all Eastern time zones. I'll, we're working on getting some other time zones in here. But I can schedule it for Thursday at 12.10 a.m. Uh, Eastern time zone. right? And then I hit finish. And that one will be saved. I'm going to save this as a draft for now and hit finish and now that goes into my drafts. From there I could copy it because I got it built exactly how I wanted how I wanted to. There it is. I could copy it over and I could create another one and change the words on it and schedule it for later on. Right? Okay, so those are all in uh, my emails. And um, they're here. I can take any of my emails and I can put these emails into um, I can put these emails into my newsletters, my promotions, um, my other folders, or I can create new folders. So let's say that I want to, I put all my Christmas emails into one folder, or I put all my current client emails into one folder and my potential emails into another folder. I can create and manage those folders right there. Okay. So I've got my emails, new emails, image gallery. Image gallery is just a very easy way to upload your images. I can go over to uh, and open up my all my images, my folder with all my images, and I can just grab whichever image that I want, and I can drag it right in there, and it will upload that image and uh, and put it right in there. Or I can hit select an image, and I can select an image, and then it will drop it right in there. And then now when I'm building my emails, they're there for me. Social sharing. Uh, is a part of, it's one of the options, you, social sharing uh, is on any of the pages. So like all of your emails that you create have a specific web page. And that specific web page will look something like this, except it'll have your, your URL in there and the, and the sub URL. And when they, uh, here's one of the emails that we sent out. Anybody can click on to share that uh, on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, um, somebody that shares it 
if somebody clicks on it and is reading that email, they can subscribe to that email by clicking the subscribe button, which then takes them to a page that you can customize for your client, and this is their sign up page where they can where they have their own logo at the top and their own color here, and they can put in their email address and subscribe to the group. Or that you can put in their name and last name and email address. You can customize the form to be able to collect the data that you want and customize the header and all that information. So when people click subscribe, that it takes them to that page. So all of your emails show up here. You've got a social sharing page which shows all of your emails. And some people link to this off of their website. So um, for instance, uh, on my website, I could put a button that says, um, you know, see all of our recent emails, click here, and you can join our list. And they click here, and it shows all the recent emails, and they can click join our uh, mailing list. This is just the name of my account. So you could have your, the name of your client's account would go here, or the name of your account would go there. All right, so that's what your social share URLs are there. You, you have to click these buttons to display which emails you want on them. Confirm contacts is uh, essentially double opt-ins, double email opt-ins, okay? So you can send an email out. You can upload a list. You can send an email out by selecting that list once you've uploaded them and then uh, sending an email out. Um, the email that you're sending out to them, you can customize it to exactly what you want. But essentially what it says is, uh, it's under the auto responses and it's a confirmation email. So it's sending them an email and we'll look at that confirmation email real quick. You can create it to say whatever you want. So you upload a list and then you can send them the confirm, the confirm email and then you can edit this to have it say exactly what you want it to say. But basically, we value having you as a subscriber and would like to confirm that you want to receive our emails. Yes, I want to keep receiving your emails. And then it'll take the list and only uh, allow you to send to people that confirm by clicking that URL so or by clicking that link. So it's all pre-set up for you. So if somebody wants to double opt in their list or to make sure that their list still wants their emails because they haven't emailed them in two years, it's all pre-set up to be able to do that. You just go to your confirmed contacts and can send that email out. Your folder manager, I was kind of showing you that a little bit earlier. Your folder manager is just where you can add new folders so that you can create a folder for your Christmas uh, emails, create a folder for your newsletters, create a folder for your current clients, that kind of thing. Auto response is all the stuff that happens automatically. Remember I said that everybody has a page where they can click join the mailing list and or they can click subscribe and when they click subscribe that they go in here and they can put in their email address and when they put in their email address and hit subscribe, they get an instant email that says, hey, you subscribe to our mailing list. Well, what does that email look like? Well, that's the welcome email. So when someone su subscribes your email list, you want to customize your welcome email. So you can go in and pre-customize it. Welcome to our mailing list, confirmation required. And then you can go in here and change your uh, image at the top, right, to have it look like whatever the image that you want it to look like is. And so you select your header or whatever, and you put that in there. And then you can change the words in it. But then people get this automatic welcome email and they got to click to confirm and subscribe, right? It's an auto response. Auto response is different than a text auto responder. Auto response means they did something. Well, for the welcome email, to get the welcome email, that means you went to a page and subscribed to the mailing list and put in your email address, right? That's how you got that welcome email. And so that's a confirmation email. The confirmation email is what somebody gets when they're confirming your email subscription, when you send that out. Uh, profile updated, if somebody requests to update their information, whether their email address or their name, um, this is the email that you send to them that says, hey, you requested a profile update. And then they click that and it accesses their profile. So then they can change it to say something different. Um, forward to a friend. When someone clicks forward to a friend on an email, if you selected that option, so here is an email, and if we had selected forward to a friend, that would be one of the options on here. And if they clicked forward to a friend, it would launch an email in their email application of choice. Well, that email would say, would look like this. Hey, you've been forwarded an email. Um, oh, they put in the email address, and this is the email that's sent out. 
You've been forwarded an email. Logo. Hello, friend's name, because they type in their friend's name. And the forwarder name, they put in their own name. Thought you might be interested in receiving this email, blah, blah, blah. And then you can customize the content, including the images on here. And you can put who the reply mail is. You can put who the forwarded uh, the subject line is. It's got that um, uh, little email subject in there that you know automatically pulls in the email subject. So if somebody hits forward to a friend, this is what it's going to look like, and you can customize that. Um, if you're not using forward to a friend, you never have to create your auto response. If you're not sending confirmation emails, you never have to do that. If you're, you don't have to do your welcome email unless you're using the enroll uh, the one of these pages for mailing list signups. If people are signing up for email by dropping their card in a fishbowl, then you never have to do this sign up form. But if they're signing up from a website, you get to have a button that links to this page, and you can make those buttons inside here as well. Okay, so uh, that's all the auto responses. Let's look at con our contact menu real quick. Um, our contacts menu just is basically shows all of our contacts, gives us quick ways to be able to add contacts. Here's our contact dashboard, total contacts, what's been added, who has signed up online, unsubscribe and complaints, go right there. Uh, we can go in and quick add. We can go over here to add contacts. We can look at activity logs. The reporting, by the way, is really great in here as well. So um, here is where I can um, I can add new contacts. So I can select what group do I want to add a contact to. I can go down here, select this group, and I want to add them to this list. Now I could type or copy my email address. So I could just click in here, hit next, and now I can just, if I've got a data entry person typing in the email addresses from my list, I can type in all the email addresses right here and then just hit finish. Okay. If I have a list to upload because I pulled the list down from my other email provider, then I can just upload a file and I can upload a CSV file, an Excel file, and upload it right in there. All those contacts go right in. Um, I can type in names and email addresses of different people. Okay. So all those are options. Um, manage my groups. I can manage my groups. I can search for individual users to opt them out. I can export everything from the application. Um, I can block or unsubscribe somebody or remove them from a group. Um, confirm contacts. We've talked about confirming contacts and sending people out um, uh, an email that confirms them. Forms and buttons. We're going to take a look at that. Some of this I'm skipping over. You guys can play around with, but it's kind of self-explanatory. So um, here I can go to hosted forms and screens. In my hosted forms and screens, that is where I can, you know, uh, uh, create. A, the page where people sign up, right, and make it look like it's part of my website. I can put in my logo. We know how to do that. I click the edit button, drop in my picture or whatever. I can change what this says at the top. You know, I could say, you know, enroll in my email program and receive super duper discounts, right? So I can customize it the way that I want it to. I can change my background color to my exact color code of my business and so that it looks exactly like my business, right? Um, I can change the uh, information that I'm collecting in here um, by saying that I want to display the first name but not make it required, or I want to display the last name, not make it required, or make it required, right? And I can change the order of them or whatever I want to do. Um, and so now I've made this page finish. And that's the URL of where that sign-up form is going to be located. Now, if I go back down to my forms and buttons page again, I can create some web some web widgets. And so, do I want a website sign-up form, which we just did, or do I want a website sign-up button? So I can go and I can create whichever button that I want. Find my button for like a join my mailing list button. And I can copy and paste that code right on my website, wherever I want it. And there it will link right to that page real easily, if that's the way that I want to do it. Um, <clears throat> I can customize it. Um, my activity report, we've looked at that already. Uh, it's mailing list activity. My reports, my email analytics tracks all my contacts, bounces, complaints, uh, really slick looking reporting. So when my emails go out here, 
You can see cool looking reports to show people how many opens I get, how many bounces, how many clicks. I can look at these over a period of time. I can search, I can sort by them. Um, I can go in and look at reports on a single email and look at what day, what was opened. Um, so here's my delivered emails, 11 bounces, 96% success rate, uh, total opens, my total clicks, 43%, which is really good. 48 hour performance, look right here, 136, 20. So you can see most of my emails were opened up pretty quickly. And then if any were opened up over a period of time after that. So really after we got past 48 hours, nothing, nothing really was there. Um, bounces, complaints, any of that kind of stuff. Your settings, that's all your sender info, physical address. You preset all that, what you want your footer to look like, what you want your physical address to be, and then every email that you create automatically defaults to having all that information. So you don't have to um, uh, pre reset that as you create new emails into the future, right? Um, so here's my, here's my default stuff. Here's some of the other things that I can look at and change around. Um, and I can add unsubscribe reasons. I mean, there's a lot of stuff here that I'm not going to get into every single one of them today, but uh, you're certainly you're certainly get the idea. Very very robust email application tested over a long period of time with a lot of different enterprise level clients. The ability to be able to send millions of emails a day uh, out and be able to get the highest delivery of any other uh, email application out there. And again, we're turning it on for everybody. And uh, it's four dollars a month per email account in addition to the account fee. So you're going to charge more if they want email as well. And the way I, I've been doing it is just, you know, hey, it's X amount for just the SMS tools and mobile coupons and your mobile website. But if you want uh, email as well, it's another $10 a month. And so I'm getting a little bit on the account fee. And then I'm charging them, you know, two tenths of a penny or three tenths of a penny margin is what I'm trying to make on every different email that I send. Because like I said, you know, one, we know one out of five or six clients is three or four or five locations. We know that uh, most people already have email databases. We know people aren't sending enough emails right now. We know that we can be competitive with anybody else in the space, maybe even save them a little money on a per email basis based on what they're paying now. But, you know, if the average business is going to send 10,000 or more emails per month, and if I'm just making three tenths of a penny per email, I'm adding another $30 of net profit on to my overall uh, bottom line. And if I do this across a few hundred clients, you know, it can really add up to a lot of money per month. But we know every client is not a one location business. And I've made reference to businesses that come in with lists that are, they already have 12,000 people on their email list. They've already got that. And you bring that list over and they're sending out, you know, uh, six, eight emails a month and you're making three tenths of a penny on that, you're making a net of $200 additional on that one client that you brought over. And that's just a two location place. But they already had a huge database because they've been building up their emails for an extended period of time. This is an opportunity for you from multiple capacity to be able to go out and really show people you have it all together. You know how to make email work with social. You know how to make social work with SMS. You know how to use SMS to be able to build their social and to be able to grow their email lists. And that you know that you bring an ROI with email, and so they need to continue to invest in that. The other thing to think about is you do not have to be the best price to be able to win business today. A real business does not always go with the cheapest option. Although sometimes we use that as a lead-in to be able to, to have a conversation with people because, hey, if I can save money, sometimes that's what's interesting. But what's even more exciting than saving money is actually making money. Making money is always more exciting than saving money. And when I talk to people that I can really grow their social media, that I can double the amount of people in their email uh, campaigns, which means I'm going to get them more opens, which means they're going to have more people come in the door, and I can build a big database of people that will help bring in new business to them and grow their revenues and actually put cash in their pocket at the end of each month, more than what they had today, that's going to get them excited. And you show them this platform that you can do all of this in it, 
you don't have to be the cheapest priced email program, especially if you're going to help them manage all of these different things and come up with a campaign that works right together. Email is another one of those things where in any given city, any metropolitan area, there may be 40 different email options of people that are right inside town that people could go to and get email services from, plus hundreds online that they could go to and buy from and self-manage. But, but why is it that there's companies, and I can think of three or four right here in the Kansas City, uh, right here in our Kansas City market, just in our Kansas City market, email companies that do email solely, how can those companies stay in business and, and cost more money than Constant Contact or cost more money than MailChimp? Because they're providing a real service to their customers, better open rates, better emails, um, better design of those emails, responsive re emails that they're sending out, that they're helping them with other pieces of their business, that they're driving more e-commerce sales, that they're providing them a mobile website. We provide you the tools to be able to do all of these things and do them as well as anybody in the space. If you help your customers, if you help manage them, if you learn it yourselves where you become an expert, this stuff does not sell itself, but it's as close to selling itself as possible. You still have to build a business. You still have to call on these companies and sell them the value of you, along with the application, your application. You have to get on the phone with these people, get in front of them, and sell them the value of growing their business, of investing a dollar to get $40 back on their email campaigns, and investing another dollar to get $80 back on their SMS campaigns, and investing a dollar because Google just changed its algorithms and their website is going to continue to drop in rankings, costing them business if they don't get it fixed right now. If I were you today, I would pick up the phone and call every business in my local market and tell them what just happened today and they are going to be losing money if they don't get it fixed immediately. And to call you, because you've got much more than just a quick fix for that, but you've got a way to help them actually grow their revenue significantly, double the size of their email databases, get more opens in their email campaigns, get more e-commerce or online orders, and give them the ability to build up the most important piece of data that anybody could ever have today. Start capturing the mobile phone numbers of your potential and current clients. 10 years ago, if I asked you, do you want your uh, your, your customers or potential customers' home address, you would have said yes. Five years ago, if I said, do you want your customers' email addresses, you would have said yes. Today, are you as a business gathering mobile phone numbers of your potential or current clients? If you're not, where are you going to be three years ago? I mean, three years from now. Thank you all for tuning in. I hope you're excited. Um, let us know what you think. Uh, email us. If you would, we are going to send a text message to you real quick that says, uh, that asks you if you wouldn't mind writing on our Facebook wall and uh, telling us uh, what you think of today's presentation and the tools that we provide you. And you certainly don't have to because uh, you're white labeled. But if you want to, you certainly can, and we'd love for you to. Um, if not, we'd love your feedback. You can email us at info at avidmobile.com. I'll stay on and answer questions. Um, John's going to uh, stay on and answer some questions for you for a minute because i got to run to the bathroom. But then I'll be right back and answer questions verbally. But I'm going to turn off the recordings, run to the restroom, and I'll be right back. You guys can stay on. If you do leave, tell me by on your way out, please, like you always do. And I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're as excited as I am for this new release, our new dashboard, the new algorithms, and everything else. We'll talk to you guys soon. And, John, take it away for a minute.